Good morning. Today, just now we completed a very good uh, foreign body removal with the bronchoscopy. So now I am going to show them how the instrumentations are and how we do our procedures here. Okay. So the first and foremost thing you saw is the child was there, and then once the patient child was under, I used this laryngoscope. The laryngoscope in the left side, I open the mouth, just visualize the larynx look if there is any foreign body here then apply gentle suction around the larynx not inside the airway because if you suck inside the airway the oxygen will all get off and then the patient will go for hypoxia so. so you just suck around it and then just if there is minimal secretion in the airway just suck it come out the next thing i do is by the time I'm, my suction is coming out the scope should be delivered in my right hand by the next assistant then I insert it with the lens alone into the airway and then I take this scope off. Now the scope with the lens goes into the airway. I just go beyond the vocal cords, go into the trachea, this is the trachea and then go and see both the right and the left bronchus. And then if there is a foreign body that I can see, I just notice it and then I come out. Again I leave the patient for the masking. By the time you have passed the scope, there will be some amount of hypoxia. So again the anesthetist will be ventilating the patient. Now the next thing I do is, now I know which size where the location of the foreign body is and what is the age of the patient and what is the size of the trachea I know uh, gently so then the, I have to choose the appropriate sized bronchoscope in this particular uh, foreign body case even though he was a, a little uh, older boy this could have been an easy scope to go into the trachea okay and visualize even the right mainstream bronchus but the foreign body was located in the left a terminal bronchus so i will not be able to access with this bronchoscope all the way there so i need to choose a bronchoscope which is small enough to negotiate into the left secondary bronchus if not even to the terminal bronchus so once again i had to choose a smaller size bronchoscope here i chose the 4 or 3.5 so either we can use the 4 or you can use the 3.5 so 3.5 next thing you have to do is you have to attach the prism this is called as prism so this is like a light carrier so you have to insert this into the bronchoscope here like this so there will be two tucks one two so if you put two and then attach your light source here then the brightness to see for the assistant will be very good from here but when you put the two ticks in the instrumentation for example if you want to pass the suction or forceps through this will be there will be some impedance so if you want to do that once you visualize what the place is then you just with your thumb just do like this it will go to the first tick there and then hold it then you insert your suction suction out the secretions and then once you come out you just put it back visualize where you are and then once again you should be now ready with your foreign body forceps along with the scope so when you are using the foreign body forceps you have to choose the forceps what you are going to use if it is a peanut this is the peanut forceps we use it this is like this okay and if it is like a whistle or where i have to use my sharp edge to hold it i use this one this one you see that there is a small prong there that will hold it like this and i can take it if i need more grip entirely i use this kind of serrated one okay and then I take it out like a coin or something where I need a good grasp. 
So once I know what the forceps I am going to choose, if the forceps is like this, the endoscope should be held in upside, upside down so that light carrier. I pass this through the forceps and then lock it. Lock it like this. Then I, if I have a, another light source, that will be the best, best thing. You can attach this light source to here. So while all this is happening, the patient is being ventilated and now the assistant holds this alignment it's ready and then once again I insert my laryngoscope and the bronchoscope whichever I have chosen and once again while inserting this bronchoscope I may need a light source if a second light source is available then it is well and good so that I can use this I don't have to switch the light once I am going inside, I remove this, I position myself just proximal to the bronchiole where the foreign body is, just proximal. If, if the foreign body is here, I don't go all the way near the foreign body, just a little proximal I, I place it and then I hold it like this, support it and then I remove the light source, attach it to this and then I pass on this assembly through the scope, see here, the stick, all the way inside. So once I pass it all the way down, I will be visualizing in my screen whether the foreign body is being held by this forceps or not. So here, it happened to be a whistle here. This is the whistle that I was just removed. I hold the foreign body securely and I will try to mobilize it only until the proximal end of this bronchoscope. That's all I can move. I should not move further. If I try to move further, the foreign body will slip off from the uh, scope and from the forceps. So I just should hold it in just uh, pro uh, proximal to the uh, distal end of the bronchoscope. And then once I am holding it securely, I have to move the entire assembly. Let's say this is the bronchus and trachea. I have to move the entire assembly out. So once it is out, I just leave it into the container. Then again, I should be very quick. I have to remove this and I have to only take the forceps out and pass the lens inside and see if there is any other second foreign body there or if there is any bleeding or if there is any injury and then if I need to do suctioning I take it out I put my suction there I suction out make sure there is no hypoxia if there is you can attach this is a ventilating bronchoscope you can attach the anesthetic uh, oxygen uh, to the center so once the oxygenation is secured, you know that the patient is uh, breathing well. This is how we, we can attach if needed. And then you once again take the scope out and then give the patient to the anesthetist. If needed, you can even intubate the patient and give it to the anesthetist. Or if not, if you are sure that the patient has come out very nicely, then you can stop the procedure and give the patient to the anesthetist. Again, you auscultate the patient make sure you ask for a, a check ch chest x-ray and then make sure your recording is fine so that you can discuss the findings with your patients thank you now we are going to see the actual removal of the foreign body from the bronchus in the light so this is a child who had come with the history of choking and the x-ray was shown just before and now we are just using the same techniques we suctioned and then we are passing the endoscope through the trachea and now we are entering the right main stem bronchi and we are also seeing the left bronchus main stem and as we go through the main stem we are now going through the secondary bronchiole and we can see that there is a small grayish foreign body in the distal part of secondary bronchiole 
and once this is confirmed we are just withdrawing the scope out and now we are going to insert the bronchoscope along with the foreign body forceps and this particular forceps is the foreign body grasping forceps and now we are going into the left main stem bronchus and then we are going into the secondary bronchiole almost in distal secondary bronchiole and we are trying to grasp the foreign body which is looking like a plastic material as of now that's why it was not showing up in the x-ray now with the technique that I had shown we are removing the foreign body along with the forceps along with the bronchoscope in one single unit outside this foreign body happens to be a whistle and we have to make sure that whether the foreign body has come out in toto or if there is any for piece of the foreign body missing and here we have completely removed it and once the foreign body is removed we insert the bronchoscope again as I had mentioned in my lecture before we are tilting the head and going into the left side of the bronchus and as we are going the anesthetist is trying to use his ventilating channel into the ventilating attachment in the bronchoscope and now we are examining to number one to see if there is any bleeding or number two if there is any other second foreign body and then we are inserting the suction to remove out the clots or any secretions there and then once again reinsert the lens into the bronchoscope and do a check bronchoscopy to confirm that there is no other foreign body and there is no bleeding and this is a check bronchoscopy that shows that the foreign body has completely been removed and there is this is a view of the terminal bronchioles and the secondary bronchioles on the left side which is little unusual to get a foreign body on the left side even though right is more commoner and this is the right side bronchus intermedius and the bron terminal bronchioles and as I come out you can see the right upper bronchus and then we are completing the procedure we are removing the bronchoscope and this completes the procedure thank you